As promised, here is my video in which theists describe what they believe God is in their own words. I know it was a tall order, but three people have stepped forward, and I'm grateful to them for doing so. They have all given me new stuff to think about, and I hope those who see this feel the same way. Please see the description for links to their channels. I'm sure I don't need to say this to most of you, but please try to use constructive criticism if you happen to disagree with them, rather than insults. One of my motivations for making this is that in talking to people about how to go about making this world a better place, there is a lot of common ground. Whether a person is theist or atheist often doesn't come into it. I really want to avoid conflict and drama, concentrate on whatever common goals we have, and discuss, with curiosity, the things we disagree about. Hopefully, that way we'll get closer to figuring out exactly what is true regarding the God question. First up is Interstellar Dig. What is God? God is a description of reality that um, accepts the rational position that reality is independent of the self. Um, the reality is objective, but that also uh, comprehends the significance of George Barclay's argument um, that reality is, empirically speaking, in the end has only ever been um, a subjective, a subjective experience. That, I think, is the philosophical basis for theism. To my limited understanding, this seems like a philosophical description of reality which has been labelled as God. This outlook seems to take into account an objective as well as subjective view of the world. Interstellar Dig goes into this in much more detail in other videos, which I find interesting and I feel like I can learn from. At this point, I haven't been convinced that what he's describing is God, but it seems that we believe a lot of the same things, but label them differently. If I have time, I would like to explore more of what he said in future videos. I admit to being fairly ignorant when it comes to philosophy, but I'm curious and want to learn more. Now we have Tenagliac. Greetings from the Second Age of Reason. This is in response to Finmarg channel, where he's going to put out some items of Christians to atheists and atheists to Christians. Well, this is Christian to atheist. Simple answers about God, about the scope of God. So, number one, God is omniscient, all-knowing. He knows everything, stuff that's already known, stuff that is known, and stuff to be known in the future. Everything about it in the most minute and infinite detail. That's omniscient. Number two, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere in the whole universe and dimensions and realities. From this reality into the reality that we refer to as heaven or the hereafter and beyond. That has a consequence. If God is everywhere in all the realities, God cannot move about. He is pretty well stuck in the location. Where? Here. He's already here all the time. That's the property of being omnipresent. Number three, omnicronus. Omnicronus. All the time. We used to ask, how old is God? We'd say, he always was. And he always will be. And he always is. So, if he occupies all of the space, and all of the time, it makes logical sense when Moses asked him his name. What is your name that I might tell them? And God says, my name is I Am. Tell them I Am has sent you which is totally logical given that he is everywhere and in all the time. So he can say, I am, and it's true in any place or time. 
So those are some of his properties. And he cannot move, but there's no need for him to move because he's already here. And you say, well, why doesn't he talk to us? Because everything he has said, he's already said. And now it's up to you to reach out to him. That's how you connect to eternity. Until later, we'll be seeing you. My first observation is that Tanagliak describes God as if he knows what God's properties are, rather than believes. Maybe he does know. I certainly can't make that claim. The scope of God, as he put it, is based on what seem to me to be assumed properties. The idea is that not only does God exist throughout space and time, but also exists outside and beyond. Concepts I don't fully understand because I think they are outside of existence. But I admit my knowledge and understanding are limited. I'm intrigued by the idea of reaching out to him as a way to access eternity. I don't really know what that means because the God label is a stumbling block for me, in the same way that the supernatural is. It might be the remnants of magical thinking bouncing about in my brain, but I certainly don't have this whole thing figured out yet. He has made another video about miracles and magical thinking, which I plan to address at some point, but I'm reluctant to commit myself to officially because of lack of time and the tendency of other ideas for videos to barge their way to the front of my mind. Now we have Joe Palksack. Having been an atheist for 30 years, I'll begin with a clinical definition of what God is, and then I'll briefly describe who God is. God is the immaterial, uncreated, uncaused, first cause, the reason everything exists. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. God is your eternal Father. He created you out of love, and He loves you fervently with a perfect love. He's closer to you than your spouse, your parents, your children, your closest friends. He pursues you, and He desires that you pursue Him and return His love. He's proven His love through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it will be open to you. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But please, seek him while he can be found. Joe doesn't mention God being omnicronous, but he does add omnipotent, all-powerful. I expect he attributes all those properties to God. I can imagine that if God is real, and if he did create the universe, then in some ways he'd be more important to us than our friends and family. The problem I have getting my head around all that is the if question. If he is real, and if he does want us to seek him, why does he hide from people like me so effectively? What exactly am I missing, and why can't I see it? I must note that he also speaks about God as if he knows all about him, rather than believes. An uncaused first cause sounds impressive, but I'm baffled as to how anybody could know such a thing. To me it seems like speculation and labelling. Joe is the only one to have mentioned Jesus, which is another stumbling block for me. I don't understand how the life, death, and alleged resurrection of Jesus are proof of the love of God. There are so many assumptions I would have to make to even make sense of it. I hope that as a former atheist he can understand why these things are tricky. All three make interesting points, and I don't feel like I've done them justice in my first reactions. In my videos I usually address young earth creationists whose misrepresentations of science are easy to point out. I'm more out of depth with these guys. As I said in my previous video, I'm very much an agnostic atheist. I would argue that everyone is agnostic, whether they're at the theistic or atheistic end of the spectrum. But a lot of theists claim to know, and that puzzles me. If we were created by an intelligent being, then I would expect the properties of this being to in some way align with what we know about the natural world. I'm intrigued 
by the possibility that there is some truth in a theistic worldview, but that most of what believers claim to know is a garbled description of what has really happened, and therefore easily dismissed in its entirety by sceptics like me. I think that there is a lot of talking at cross-purposes in this theist versus atheist discussion, and many atheists seem to assume that if someone is Christian, then they must believe the universe is only 6,000 years old. Perhaps it's my Scottish and European perspective, but on this side of the Atlantic, the majority of Christians have no problem with the scientific findings about the age of the universe and evolution. I feel like I've only scratched the surface of this, and uh, would like to return to the subject in future videos, and hopefully, now that YouTube doesn't properly do video responses, um, get around this by including clips of other people's videos in mine, which have been made as video responses. Anyhow, I hope that this has given you as much to think about as it has for me. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.